In the new version of Cisco's CCNA Blueprint version 1.1 that goes live August 20th, 2024, one of the new topics they've introduced is AI for network operations, and that's what we're going to be discussing in this video. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and I mentioned that Cisco had added AI to the CCNA Blueprint. Specifically, they want us to be able to explain how AI can help us with network operations, and they identified three specific terms for us to know machine learning, predictive AI, and generative AI. We're going to cover all that in this video, but I'm also going to include some underlying foundational concepts to help you better understand the specific concepts that you need to know for the exam. Here's what we're going to be covering. We're going to cover a collection of AI terms. For example, we'll talk about the difference between AI and machine learning and deep learning. We'll discuss how an AI model gets trained and we'll compare supervised learning with unsupervised learning. And then we're going to get a bit mathematical and go through the math behind neural networks. And finally, in this video, we'll take a look at how Cisco is currently using AI in many of their products. Now, let's jump into the video, which, by the way, is a sampling for my upcoming CCNA version 1.1 video training series, as we consider how artificial intelligence can help us out with network operations and management. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is impacting so many different areas of our lives today, it's probably no surprise that it's going to impact how you and I do our jobs as network professionals. In fact, Cisco recently introduced this as a topic in the CCNA version 1.1 exam. And in this video, we're going to cover a collection of AI terms. We'll get a bit mathematical as we talk about how neural networks function. And we'll give you some examples of how Cisco is already integrating AI into some of their products. And we'll start with a broad definition of AI. AI is not one technology, it's sort of an umbrella term that encompasses lots of underlying technologies. And we'll dig into some of those in this video, but AI in its various forms is meant to make a system simulate human intelligence. And a subset of AI that Cisco identifies as something you need to know for the CCNA version 1.1 exam is machine learning. With machine learning, we can use a lot of data to train a model so it can recognize patterns and recognize how things work in the real world. And then once we train it, it's then going to be able to analyze data and make predictions about what's going to happen in the future. Or we could use that model to generate something that's brand new. And even though this is not a comprehensive listing, there are two primary types of learning I want you to know about. Supervised learning and unsupervised learning. With supervised learning, the training data that we feed in to our system, it's going to have a label on it. And once our system learns what labels get applied to what patterns, it's going to be able to classify and label new data. Unsupervised learning does not have the data labeled, but the system is going to try to group the data into different categories to see if some natural division lines appear. Let me give you a couple of examples. Supervised learning might be used to identify spam email. If we have trained our system with lots of examples of email messages and we say these are spam and these are not spam, then when new email messages come along, our system is going to be able to interrogate that email and label it as either spam or not spam based on the training data we gave it. Now with unsupervised learning, the training data doesn't have labels, but our system is going to look at this raw data and try to form natural groupings of the data. So let's say we fed a lot of network traffic into our system, and maybe our system has learned the pattern of normal network traffic. That's going to allow it to spot something out of the ordinary and hopefully identify malicious traffic as being malicious traffic, even though we don't have a signature for that traffic. You might have heard of the term of a zero-day attack where a threat is brand new. There's no signature to recognize this threat. But with AI, we can be examining our network traffic and identify which grouping it falls into, either the not malicious group or potentially the malicious group to catch those zero-day attacks. And we said that ML or machine learning was a subset of AI. Well, deep learning is a subset of machine learning. With deep learning, our system is going to be using neural networks those are actually modeled after the human brain where they have neurons. And we can train our neural networks using both supervised and unsupervised learning. That's something called semi-supervised learning. Now let's get a bit mathematical and take a look at neural networks. Neural networks have one or more inputs. And that input might be the value of a pixel in an image. It might be a value given to an audio sample. It might be the value of a sensor currently in an autonomous vehicle. But we have these different inputs coming in to a neuron or a node, we could call that. And notice all the interconnections between the neurons in the input layer and the next layer of neurons. 
we can have multiple hidden layers of neurons that we're not directly interacting with, but notice that every neuron at one layer is connected to every neuron at another layer. It kind of reminds me of a spine leaf network design that we might see in a data center. And as a really basic example of what we could do with this neural network, we might input the value of pixels in an image. Let's say that we have an image of a dog, and obviously we have more than three pixels that make up this image of a dog, but to make it easy to visualize, let's say we can represent that image with three pixels. And the value of each of those pixels can go into one of these neurons, and uh, you see uh, that we have calculation going from the input layer through the hidden layers to the output layer, where it says, oh, this is a dog. And our neural network knows that based on its training data. Now, what sort of math is really going on between these neurons? Let's take a closer look at that. Here we've got a couple of neurons on the left feeding into a neuron on the right, and each of these neurons on the left have a value. Again, this could be a value representing a pixel, or an audio sample, or a sensor, or anything else that we can quantify and give a number to. And maybe one of these neurons on the left is more important than the other neuron in producing the desired result, so what we can do is assign a weighting to each of those neurons. We have a weighted interconnection, a weighted link. And the goal is to assign a value to that neuron on the right. Here's the way we start. We take the value of each neuron on the left and multiply by the weight. So for example, for that top left neuron, it has a value of 1.27. We multiply it by its weight of negative 2.87. That's going to give us a negative 3.6449. And we do the same thing for the bottom left neuron. That's going to give us a weighted product of 1.0375. And then, remembering our goal is to give a value to that neuron on the right, so it can continue on to the next layer of neurons. But to give that red neuron a value, we're going to add up those weighted products. We're going to say, alright, let's add up negative 3.6449 and 1.0375. That's our sum of the weighted products. And that gives us negative 2.6074. And there's another value associated with that neuron on the right. It's called the bias. Think of that as the baseline, where a value will never be below that baseline. And we can raise or lower that as needed. But let's say that that red neuron currently has a bias value of 0 0.25. Well, we want to add that bias value to the sum of our weighted products. That's going to give us a value of negative 2.3574. And there's one more step in assigning a value to this red neuron. We need to take the value that we have right now, after we've added the bias, and we want to put that into a function. It's called an activation function. And the purpose of an activation function is to add some non-linearity to this model. Because if you think about it, in the real world, relationships between naturally occurring things, they are rarely, if ever, purely linear. So if we're trying to use the equation of a line and do forecasting based on that, do you remember the old y equals mx plus b formula for a line from high school? If we just use that, that means that everything is linear. And that's just not true. And on screen, I'm showing you the sigmoid function. That's a really common function that's used in AI. And I put in our value of x that we've calculated so far, of negative 2.3574. We put that into the activation function, which is a sigmoid function, whose result is always going to be in the range of 0 through 1. And that gives us a value for that neuron of 0 0.9135. And once we do that for all the neurons in one layer, the same thing can continue to the next layer, and so on, and so on. And obviously, we're zoomed into just three neurons here. The math gets a lot more complicated when we have many, many neurons. When we get to that point, we start representing these values in matrices, and we have to do some linear algebra to calculate this. And now that we have a basic idea of the math behind the scenes, let's talk about how a neural network is trained. We have some data that we can input into the neural network, and we know what the results should be. So let's say we're inputting three values, x1, x2, and x3. And those values are processed through the neural network with a fairly random set of weights for those links and a fairly random set of bias values for the neurons. And once the calculation is complete, and this is called forward propagation as we go through the neural network from the input to the output, we come out with our prediction. And because we're using training data, we can see if the prediction was accurate or not. We take the actual value and compare it with the prediction using a loss function. And if they don't perfectly match, what we can do is go back through a process called a backward propagation, and we can tweak the weights and the bias values until we get closer and closer and closer to the actual value. 
Once we've minimized that error, then we have a trained neural network. So we might be able to feed an image recognition neural network with the image of a cat. And again, we'll assume it's only three pixels. And after this neural network has been trained by doing backwards propagation and comparing the prediction with the actual value and doing that again and again and again, we should be able to come out a high percentage of the time with a correct value, in this case of a cat. And there are a couple of specific types of AI that Cisco identifies on their exam blueprint for CCNA version 1.1 that we want to cover next. Those are predictive AI and generative AI. Predictive AI, as the name suggests, is going to be able to take past data and forecast or predict what's going to happen next. Generative AI can generate something that is original based on a previous image. For example, we might feed the system lots of images of dogs and then say, hey, create a picture of a dog. And it creates a picture of a dog, but it's not a duplicate of anything we fed into it. It just learned the patterns of dogs and it's able to generate something original. Let's see how we might apply this in our networks. With predictive AI, we might be able to forecast network issues. Maybe we put in network performance data that we've collected over a period of time. And based on that, AI might say, Based on your current trends, we forecast that your WAN link might become congested within the next two weeks. You might want to look at some load balancing or increasing your bandwidth capacity. So with predictive AI, we're predicting something in the future based on previous events. With generative AI, we can create something original. For example, maybe we need some assistance in creating a network design. Well, after we have properly trained our model, we might be able to say, create a network design that meets the following criteria. And maybe we have so many clients, we need so many subnets. We need to support so many wireless devices and generative AI might be able to give us a topology of a suggested network. And now that we've discussed a collection of AI terms and we've taken a look at how AI can learn, let's see how Cisco is currently using AI in some of their products. And from the list on screen, you can see that Cisco has already integrated AI into several of their product offerings. And I'm not going to take time in the video to read through these bullets. You can pause the video if you'd like to read them yourself, but I want to give you the big takeaway. Specifically, I want to give you what I would say are the four main benefits of using AI in our network. We could use generative AI to help us with network design. We could do network troubleshooting because if we have a model that's trained that recognizes different symptoms of a problem, we might be able to use AI to identify the problem and have it give us a course of action to correct that problem. We could also use AI to detect malicious traffic. This might be based on training data where it saw examples of malicious traffic, or maybe it's based on raw data where it grouped normal traffic patterns against anomalous traffic patterns. And AI can not only help us respond to an issue, it can help us be proactive and it can predict a potential issue before it ever occurs. And that's an overview of artificial intelligence or AI. We took a look in this video at a subset of AI, which was called machine learning. And then we took a look at a subset of that called a deep learning and talked about how neural networks function. And we got a bit mathematical with that. And we saw that there were two types of AI that overlap both machine learning and deep learning. Those were predictive AI and generative AI. And then we wrapped up the video by discussing a few ways that AI could help us as network professionals.